novelist Leo Tolstoy wrote an interesting story about a landowner, a peasant farmer who did very well for himself. But he was not satisfied with what he had and always tried to get more and more. One day he was offered an interesting deal. He could buy for a thousand rubles as much land as he could walk to in one day. The catch was that, by sunset, he had to be back to the place where he started. He thought this was a wonderful deal, and he could increase his lands greatly. So very early the next morning, the farmer started off. He began to walk quickly, surveying all the land that would now be his. By noon, he had walked very far, uh, too far from the starting point, but he kept on going, hoping for more and more land. Finally, in the middle of the afternoon, he became alarmed and started walking back very quickly, afraid that if he didn't make it, all this land would be lost to him. In the later afternoon, he began to panic when he saw the sun started to go down. He started to run as the sun was beginning to disappear over the horizon. Summoning his last ounce of energy, he stumbled back to the place he had started from just as the sun disappeared. With that, his heart beating fast and his lungs panting uncontrollably, he collapsed and in a few moments was dead. His servants dug a grave for him a little more than six feet long and three feet wide. Tolstoy named this story, How Much Land Does a Person Need? How much of anything do we need? How much do we allow our lust for money, our greed for things, become our master? No one can serve two masters, so it is good to ask, what is our master? Are we enslaved by something? In the days of slavery, days which still exist in some parts of the world, slave trappers went out to trap people and sell them into slavery. These slave trappers were sometimes entrapped by the masters and became slaves themselves. People who exploit the poor become more enslaved than the poor themselves. Enslaved by their desire for wealth and power, they are more truly slaves than those they have been trying to enslave. In the words of novelist and screenwriter T. Rafael Cimino, we are all born to love people and use things. Unfortunately, we grow to love things and use people. We become the slaves when our greed becomes the master. For how many people of today is the computer the master? That thing which should be our best servant has become our cruelest master. We become obsessed with it, cannot be away from it, even long enough to appreciate the world and people around us. And that screen dominates our life. For how many has pain become the master over their life, our fear, our worry, our problems that obsess us and take over our life. Among religious people, as Pope Francis pointed out, obsession with petty doctrine can become the master so that we cannot see the bigger picture and no longer see what truly matters. What do we choose? as our master. Each of us is made in the image of that which we desire. Let us not allow anything to become our master, nor any desire smaller than ourselves, 
nor any obsession over petty things, nor any fear or worry. There is a beautiful phrase that has been horribly misused in our days by fundamentalist terrorists. They cry out the words, Allahu Akbar, as they murder and destroy. This is an ancient aspiration, usually translated as, God is great. But what it really means is, God is greater. God is greater than all of this. And these words were written by St. Augustine a hundred years before the prophet Muhammad. Deus semper maior. God is always greater. Every pious Muslim begins every prayer with these beautiful words. God is greater. Is the problem great? God is greater still. Is the pain great? God is greater still. Is the oppression great? The injustice great? Is the fear great? God is greater still. What then can become our master? What has the capacity to enslave us? In the face of everything we see, Deus semper maior, Allahu Akbar, God is greater. When finally we grasp this, then we realize that we are greater too. When at last we grasp the hand of the greater, the hand of the universal, the hand of God, then we see that nothing can enslave us, nothing overwhelm us, life can never overcome us, for then we have mastered life. Thank you.